good morning everyone so uh, today we are going to cover in this uh, lecture uh, junction field effect uh, transistors and uh, i should make a sort of generic comment before we begin and that is this like these lectures are actually not sort of full fledged you know classroom lectures and uh, that's because you already know many of these th uh, things it is essentially to uh, present a way uh, maybe a different way to uh, cover some of this material right and uh, uh, in a way it sort of explains it also uh, illustrates the philosophy of teaching that we follow here in uh, iit bombay and uh, we thought everybody could benefit from that a little bit uh, so teaching is uh, we always feel that teaching is not really about you know getting some giving some formulas and say okay here is a formula and then mug it up and write in the exam you'll get marks that it's exactly the opposite of teaching that is what we believe uh, and therefore we want to uh, do things in a different way and hopefully at least some of you will be able to follow this uh, in your uh, teaching so teaching we think is act more about you know thinking and uh, not just thinking yourself but also making your students think and for that to happen the student uh, should feel that uh, there is a link between what he he or she has already learned in the past and what he is going to learn he or she is going to learn uh, today so that is something that we always keep in mind and uh, that gives the student some confidence that he or she also can you know understand the development of a topic and not just sort of mug it up and write and get marks okay that's the last thing that is of importance all right so let's uh, uh, i will talk talk about jfets in this particular lecture and of course uh, let's let's begin okay so uh, before uh, we even get down to the structure of a uh, junction field effect transistor the student should really know what uh, what is a transistor i mean what is the basic job of a transistor and that is illustrated in this figure a transistor is Uh, to differentiate it from a diode or a resistor it's essentially a first uh, first of all it's a three terminal device second there is a conduction between source and drain and that conduction is controlled uh, by the gate terminal okay so that is the uh, essence of uh, transistor action and then of course you can have uh, various transistors there are field effect transistors there are bipolar junction transistors the field effect transistors are of various categories and so on but essentially the the idea is this there is a resistance is not of course it's not a constant resistance uh between the source and drain and that is controllable by a voltage that you apply on the gate terminal so this is something that we feel must be step number 1 in uh, uh, uh sort of illustrating a transistor any any kind of transistor that there is a the current is going to vary between source and drain on two counts one is the drain voltage itself uh and the resistance itself is getting controlled by the gate so the drain current is going to depend both on the gate voltage as well as the drain voltage so just like i said a field effect transistor has a gate terminal which controls the current flow between the other two terminals that is the source and the drain so in simple terms and that is why that is what uh, must appear before any equation appears in simple terms of uh, an fet can be thought of as a resistance connected between the source and drain which is a function of the gate voltage right that is that is the basic operation of a field effect transistor and what do you do with it etc Th these are questions that will come later in applications digital circuits analog circuits what have you all right ah the pointer now uh, as i said the mechanism of the uh, gate control it would be different in different devices for example in a junction field effect transistor as we know it is a p plus n a pn junction that controls the resistance in mesfet it's a short key barrier that controls the resistance between source and drain mosfet it's uh, again controlled by gate but there is an oxide and there is an inversion charge and so on high electron mobility transistor similar to mosfet all right so if it is can be used for both analog and digital applications in each case the fact that the gate is used to control current flow between source and drain plays uh, an extremely crucial role and that is why you must have these transistors and a, uh, a diode for example will not be able to do the same job no matter what you do because it's a two it's a two terminal device and there is it has its intrinsic limitations 
Okay, so now we proceed to the structure of a junction field effect transistor, and this again, it's it's better to show a three-dimensional view first, so that the students get an idea of uh, what a real structure looks like, and then you can go to a cross section. If you directly jump to a cross section, students often get confused; they don't know what it looks like in uh, 3D. All right, so here is a figure that shows the transistor in uh, three dimensions. There is, uh, it's like basically a rectangular. Uh, uh, it's it's a cuboid, you can say. There is a source terminal at one end, drain terminal at another end, and the gate terminal is actually the both the top and the bottom. These are connected together, and that is the gate. Once the student gets this uh, uh, picture clear, uh, it's much easier for him or her to understand uh, the cross-sectional view. All right. So next, we go to the cross-sectional view, and that's here. Uh, in the cross section of view, it's important to show the P plus regions. So what we have here is the, the channel or the conduction channel is N type silicon that's marked over there. And the device uh, you can see, uh, if you should explain to students that it's actually a symmetric uh, device. There's, a, there's an axis and things are symmetric <coughs> around that axis. The channel width or the ch uh, this would not be called width, this would be called the channel thickness, is 2 times A, where A is each one of these uh, dimensions. And it's 2A because of again symmetry. All right, so what happens essentially, uh, and that will be shown in the next slide, is there is a depletion region which will reduce the channel thickness and so on. So even this is a little, little uh, more complicated than uh, uh, what the basic, the very, very basic device structure should have, and that is because it has got these neutral regions near the source and drain, and it's it's best not to confuse matters with these neutral regions in the beginning. So let's uh, represent the same cross-sectional view with a simplified uh, structure, and that is here. Okay. So here we don't worry about this uh, source, these regions near the source and drain, but just truncate that, and of course we can add that later. <coughs> Fine. So this is the structure. And that is, as I was saying, this is a simplified structure in which we don't worry about the source and drain regions. The the purple region here is the P plus region, and the channel region itself is N. So there is a P plus N junction uh, at the top, as well as a P plus N junction at the bottom. Okay. So that is the basic structure. The mo the important things here is the doping of this uh, N region or the channel region, the length from source to drain, and the channel thickness, uh, which is called 2A here, where A is half of this, that is, and it's 2A because of the symmetry. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so the, the important things to take from this slide is the entire region between the top and bottom P plus region offers a resistance to current flow and the resistance will depend on VG and that of course we want to see. So again, make things as simple as possible first and then make them complicated later so that the students uh, get a feel for you know the, the basics first and then uh, get an idea of how uh, things are in real life. Right? So the, the very simple case that we can first consider is when the drain voltage as well as the source voltage are both zero. Okay, so that is the first case we will consider. Okay, and that shows this particular situation. And maybe I should expand this so that you can see it better. Okay, so let's concentrate first on the gate voltage equal to zero volts. And as I, as somebody was pointing out, I should go slow now. So let's take VG equal to zero volts. And in all of these figures, note that the source is grounded, the drain is grounded. In this particular case, gate voltage is also zero volts. Right? So what is what is the situation at zero volts? We have this P plus region, the purple one. Next to that, there is a, a, a blue region, and that's the depletion region, right? And this is very important because some textbooks actually don't point this out. Okay, so there is this purple region, which is the P plus region, and next to that there is this blue region, which is the depletion region. And uh, even uh, note that even if your gate voltage is zero volts, there is still a depletion region, and that's because of the built-in potential between the 
p plus of the p plus n junction. Okay, so there is it's not as if you have a gate voltage of zero volts. The depletion region is is not there. It's not at all like that. And very often, uh, some of the textbooks I've seen don't make this very clear, and that can be confusing. Okay, next to that, and of course the the, but the both the top and bottom are symmetric. So that's one thing that uh, must be noticed as well. Next to that, there's a light blue region, and that re region is essentially the n-type silicon, which has got electrons. Okay, so the depletion region does not have any electrons or holes, or extremely small number, which is insignificant. So they don't con uh, participate in conduction. The light blue region is is actually of importance, also is of interest as far as conduction from source to drain is concerned, because that that is essentially neutral. That means it has got as many ions as there are uh, electrons, and the electrons are free to move. So that is really the region uh, of interest. Okay, and the dimensions. This A, of course, is uh, the half channel thickness that is fixed. This W is the depletion region uh, width that will obviously depend on the gate voltage. H is the the width of the or the thickness of the uh, neutral region. Again, half thickness of the neutral region. Okay, so this and of course uh, H and W are both uh, uh, dependent on the gate voltage, such that H plus W will be always be A. Okay, let's go to the next next figure. The only difference between this and this is uh, that the gate voltage is now uh, made more negative. So here is, is here is zero volts. Here is let's say minus one volt. So as a result, what has happened is the depletion width. So the re, the junction is now more reverse biased. And the depletion width has increased, and therefore it has eaten up into the channel. Right. So the 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 thickness of the channel that is available to you has now decreased. So that is very clear in this figure, and so on. So once uh, the student understands this uh, point, it's easy to go forward. And if you increase this gate voltage, or rather make it more negative, obviously the, you're going to get more of the uh, depletion region and less of the uh, channel region. And of course, at some point, what's going to happen is that this whole uh, channel is going to disappear because the depletion region, the top and the bottom depletion regions, will just simply merge with each other. And that situation, of course, is called uh, the pinch-off situation. Okay. So essentially, the point is that as the reverse bias across the junction is increased by making VG more negative, the depletion region widens, as we have seen here, and the resistance offered by the N, N region increases because now you are the the width of the N region becomes smaller and smaller, and therefore the resistance increases, and that is essentially the uh, operation of a junction field effect transistor. So that is the mechanism by which the channel resistance depends on the gate voltage in a junction field effect transistor. Finally, when the reverse be bias becomes large enough, the depletion region consumes the entire end region, and that is a little bit away from this one, when all of this uh, depletion region will just uh, be one, and the channel becomes uh, pinched off. And the, the voltage that corresponds to that particular situation is called the pinch-off voltage, and that, of course, is a very important parameter for a JFET. All right. So now let's get to this pinch-off voltage. Let's see how we can calculate that. And again, uh, when you are teaching in the class, you can say, okay, the formula for the pinch-off voltage is so and so. Uh, that's not a very satisfactory thing to do. Because the students will uh, will always uh, have a lingering you know doubt in their mind, where did this come from? And they will think that it has just for sort of fallen from the heavens, and you have to just take it for granted, or or what? And in fact, it is not like that at all. It's very simple to derive, and therefore it's 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 always a good idea to derive it in front of the students, so that they 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 develop some confidence that things can be derived and not just mucked up. Very important. Okay, so uh, and how do you derive this? That's in this slide. So, what is the pinch off voltage basically? It is the gate voltage for which uh, this H becomes 0, or in other words, this W becomes equal to A. That is the pinch off voltage. So, if you know the dependence of W on VG, just equate that to A and you get your uh, pinch off voltage. As simple as that. There is no reason why this should not be derived in class. It, it must be derived in class so that uh, students 
and develop a, a better understanding okay so uh, okay so what is w for a p, p plus n junction uh, uh, the so the depletion region actually uh, extends both into the p plus region as well as the n region and if it's p plus that means it's much the p region is much more heavily doped than the n region and therefore uh, it's a fair assumption to say that all of this all of the depletion region basically is in the uh, n region and not at all in the p plus region that will be extremely small so we just ignore that part and we say then that the w uh, depletion width here is given by uh, this p plus n junction uh, expression and what does it have it has got epsilon for silicon which is 11.7 times epsilon 0. Then it has got the built-in voltage. The built-in voltage will actually depend on the doping of uh, the P plus N region, the doping of the N region. Uh, this is something like 0 0.8 volts, 0 0.9 volts, uh, 0.95 volts and so on of that order. V is the difference, uh, is, is the potential difference between the P plus and N. In this case, your P plus is sitting at VG and n is sitting at 0 volts because your source and drain everything is at 0 volts so that is uh, what v is so v is simply vg in this case q is the electronic charge and d is the doping density of uh, in the channel typically 10 is to 15 10 is to 16 per centimeter cube okay so it's it's a simple matter now to uh, put this w here and then find out what vg is and that vg will be the same as the pinch off voltage so then we substitute uh, this w here and uh, that's it and then you get the pinch off voltage equal to vbi minus uh, let me just zoom on this okay then we get this vp equal to the built in voltage minus q and d a squared by 2 epsilon now uh, problems with some other textbooks okay they say that assume vbi equal to 0 why nobody knows I certainly I don't know why okay because it is not really uh, negligible compared to that uh, term as we will see okay so that's a silly thing to say that ignore VBI okay and should, you should not say that uh, Q and D a squared by 2 epsilon so of, of these Q and epsilon are just physical constants you really can't do anything about that but N D and a squared uh, are in the control of uh, the fabrication uh, person right so <coughs> when the device is being fabricated you can control nd or you can control uh, and you can control a to get the desired value of pinch off voltage and note that this uh, dependence on a is rather uh, strong because of the square here okay whereas nd comes with the linear dependence okay let's go to the next slide so now in the next slide we have a uh, sample calculation of the pinch off voltage Okay, this structure is the same as before we do not need to zoom that. Okay, so, here is the formula is repro uh, just uh, reproduced all right. So, uh, an example and this is always I am showing this because it is always a good practice whenever you give a formula in class it is always good to put some numbers so that the, the it helps the students to get these things fixed in their minds uh, then they can connect these formulas to actual numbers and right? it really helps a lot and not only the numbers it also helps them to think about the units of each of these quantities and that is very important ok so let us so in this example we compute uh, the pinch off voltage for an ND of 2 10 to 15 per centimeter cube A the half channel uh, thickness of 1.5 micron uh, and the built and the built in voltage uh, a given built in voltage of 0.8 volts all right so let's go for, uh, further okay okay now the reason we uh, this is actually a simple calculation but the reason i put this in this slide is to illustrate uh, know the units of each quantity and uh, it is very important that the uh, that the units are used consistently so that you do not end up with you know 3.48 million volts or 3.48 micro volts and so on and that can that can happen uh, I have seen that in answer papers 
so it's very important that you bring this point out very clearly in class. So uh, Q 1.6 10 raised to minus 19 Coulomb, and you should actually ask the students to uh, tell you what Q is. And if they don't know the value of Q, they should uh, leave the class and know the value of Q and come back, maybe. Uh, so Q is something that everybody must know. Epsilon 0, 8.85 10 raised to minus 14 farad per centimeter. That is something that everybody should know. 11.7 is the epsilon for silicon, something that everybody must know. And these are all constants, basically. And so what is what are the variables? 2 10 raised to 15 per centimeter cube. That is the doping density. And 1.5 micron. Now, this is very important. We need to convert this uh, micron into centimeter so that the units work out well. So, and that conversion is 10 raised to minus 4. And then uh, you should actually show this in class. Uh, you have centimeter uh, raised to minus 3 there, centimeter squared here, and this is there is a per centimeter in the denominator. So, all the centimeters will actually cancel. You are left with Coulomb divided by farad. Coulomb divided by farad is Coulomb divided by Coulomb by volt, and that is volt. Okay. So, if you do this in class in this way uh, or uh, an equivalent uh, manner, then students actually st begin to develop an appreciation for all the units uh, and do not make, don't make mistakes. Later on. Okay, all right. So all this uh, comes to 3.48 volts, and the built-in voltage is, is 0.8 volts, and so the net pinch-off voltage therefore is minus 2.7 volts in for this device. What does it mean? It means that if you apply uh, gate voltage of minus 2.7 volts, this channel will get pinched off, and you will see a very large resistance between source and drain. That is what happens. Uh, at pinch off. <coughs> okay, things are of course different if you apply a drain voltage, and we will come to that later. Okay, so let us continue. Okay, we will continue with uh, I think there are some there, there may be some questions, but we will take them at the end. All right, so the pinch off voltage in this particular case is minus 2.7 volts, and as I was saying, the built in voltage uh, the built in voltage of 0.8 here is certainly not negligible compared to this 3.4 3.5 volts, right? So, therefore. Uh, there is no particular reason, uh, there is no good reason to ignore it, although some textbooks do, do, do that and that is not proper. Okay, let us go ahead. And this is exactly what we said. If a gate voltage of minus 2.7 volts is applied, the channel channel gets pinched off. That is the resistance between the source and drain becomes very large. Okay, so that is, uh, that was with the gate uh, drain voltage equal to 0 and now we need to consider the more general case of drain voltage not equal to 0. Right? And we took this V d equal to 0 case earlier because it is much simpler to handle and also gives the students a feel already of the pinch off voltage. Okay. So, the pinch off voltage is something that you should uh, that, uh, the, that, that can be taught even before one talks about a non zero drain voltage because it is completely independent of the train voltage. Okay, so, let us go. Okay, to this slide, let me zoom a little bit and just explain these figures first. Okay, so now here what we have is there is a certain gate voltage which is constant and we are not going to vary that from this figure to that figure to the next figure. Uh, but what we are going to vary is the drain voltage. So, in this particular example, in the, this particular figure, the drain voltage is uh, 0 volts and uh, source voltage is also 0 volts. So, there is nothing, there is uh, uh, all points in the channel are sitting at 0 volts and there is no change as you go from x equal to 0 to x equal to L. It is all the same. It's all the same. Uh, you notice that this uh, depletion width as well as the channel thickness h they are also constant that is irrespective uh, that is independent of x okay. that is because the drain voltage is at 0 volt and this is the case we have already seen uh, in the previous slide. Okay. Now, let us apply a small voltage let us say uh, 0 0.05 volts so that is 50 millivolts at the drain. So, what happens now is the, the, the reverse bias between the gate and the source is uh, the gate voltage is some value, let us say minus 1. So, this will be minus 1, minus 0, minus 1 here. Between the gate and the drain, the reverse bias would be minus 1, minus uh, 
uh, 0.05, so it will be minus 1.05. So here we have a reverse bias of 1, here you have a reverse bias of 1.05. So the drain essentially is sitting at a larger uh, reverse bias as compared to the drain, as compared to the source. As a result, what happens is the depletion region near the drain end is wider as compared to the source, and that is basically what the drain voltage will do. If you keep uh, increasing the drain voltage, the depletion width, uh, the depletion region width at the drain will increase, and of course, the source width is not going to change because the source we are not changing the source voltage. The gate voltage, remember, is a constant. Let's say minus one volt. Okay, so uh, this uh, keeps on increasing, and therefore the the channel thickness near the drain will keep on decreasing. And if you plot uh, the potential between uh, from source to drain along, let's say this line, uh, that would look something like this. So it is at zero volts here. It is at one volt here. That's because you applied a one volt uh, drain voltage, and it will vary in some manner. We don't know what that form is, but it will vary in some continuous manner between zero and one. Okay. So it is always good to show these pictures uh, to students, explain to them qualitatively what happens, and then come to equations. Uh, if you jump to equations, it basically just becomes overhead transmission for them. All right. So let's go to the next. Uh, yeah. Consider an end. So this we have already discussed. Okay. In this, uh, so it's important to note that W and H are now functions of x, right? In this figure. Let me expand it again. So what we are saying is this W and H are both, so the W here is that much, W here is that much, W here is that much, and uh, similarly H will change. So W and H are both functions of X now, it depends on where you are in the channel. But W plus H will always be equal, uh, always be equal to A, that is what we are saying here. All right. So the important point is uh, that uh, since the PN junction bias at a given uh, X is VG minus the potential at that particular point uh, that is shown in this figure approximately. The drain end of the channel is sitting at sitting with a larger reverse bias than the source end and therefore the repletion region is larger there and therefore the channel is uh, thinner. Oh. And now let us derive uh, the ID equation as I said it is always good to derive this and this derivation is a little more uh, involved but certainly something that you can do in class and you should do in class so that the students have some some confidence in how things are done. Okay, so let me uh, expand this figure. Okay, I hope after expansion it's showing up already at your at, at your end. So it is the same as uh, same figure as before. I am uh, in addition we have shown here a cross section of the device uh, so that the equation derivation becomes a little uh, more clear to the students. Okay. So this is W, that is H, and if I just take this line over there, okay, and look at the cross section of, the de of this device, this light blue region actually is the region of conduction. Okay. The, the region next to that, the blue region, is actually useless as far as conduction is concerned because it is just a depletion region with no carriers, and of course next to that is the P plus N, uh, P plus uh, gate region. So the important area for uh, the drain current calculation is just this light blue area. And what is the area, uh, the cross-sectional area of that uh, area there? It's 2H, that is this dimension, times Z, where Z is the uh, the device dimension in the in that perpendicular in the direction perpendicular. All right, so let's begin the derivative. So consider a slice of this device that we have done here. The current density at any point in the neutral region is assumed to be in the x direction. Okay, that's very important, and uh, that's a crucial assumption that uh, must be made. And uh, this is, of course, a very good uh, assumption, and that's because uh, normally this length is much larger than this uh, uh, a here, the channel uh, channel uh, thickness, and that's why this assumption is quite good. So, the, what is the current given by? It is given by the usual uh, drift term and the diffusion term. And in this uh, uh, device, in, in the junction field effect transistor, the doping density everywhere is the same, and uh, the uh, electron density is roughly equal to the doping density, and therefore the electron density everywhere in the channel is also the same, and therefore there is no derivative. This dn dx is just zero. Okay, so the the diffusion term 
drops out and you are you just get q times mu n times n d times the electric field and here of course you have to be careful careful with the signs so e, e actually is minus dv by dx but i have uh, just put dv by dx there finally we will uh, introduce all these signs correctly okay so we have neglected the diffusion current since uh, n uh, the electron density everywhere in the channel is roughly the same that is equal to the doping density and therefore d n dx is uh, zero when you differentiate this constant electron density you'll get a zero so uh, what is important in this figure note that only the neutral part of the n silicon uh, conducts that is the light uh, blue region since there are no carriers in the depletion region. So, the depletion region, depletion regions are essentially not contributing to any current at all. So, at a given x, the current I d is obtained by integrating J n over the area of the neutral channel region, that is this region here. Okay. And uh, in this device, we uh, this J n is actually the same everywhere in this area and therefore, the integral simply becomes the current density times this area. Okay, go over these slides later on uh, and see if you have any doubts. So we will go through the, this a little faster. Okay, so that is what it is. So there is this uh, J n, which is integrated over this light blue area, and that area is simply 2 h times z. And then what you see in this bracket is nothing but J n, and that is this. Right? So this J n has been substituted right here. That's it. Okay, so I d at any given x, uh, at any given x, let us say at this point, is given by 2 times q times z times mu n times n d. All of these are constants q, z, mu n, n d are all constants times a times the electric field there T v dx times uh, h. h is nothing but a times 1 minus w by a. You can show that by from the fact that h is. Uh, and basically a is h plus w and this will follow from there so uh, let's look at this equation somewhat so uh, what it says is the current uh, at any point x in the x direction is some constant times uh, dv by dx which depends on that particular x and uh, multiplied by 1 minus w by a now this factor is also dependent on x because w itself is a function of x <coughs> And we know that this ID at this point is the same as ID at this point is the same as ID at this point. So, what happens uh, in this device is that this dv dx and this 1 minus w by a, these two terms basically uh, go on adjusting uh, as x, x is uh, changed such that their product remains the same and that must be the case because we have the same current throughout the device. Okay. So, all these things are good to know uh, for the student. Next. So, what do we do next? Now, of course, we do not like this dv by dx here and we do not like this 1 minus w by a because w is also a function of x. We want an expression for id which is independent of uh, dv by dx etcetera. So, let us let us see how to do that and that is done by uh, that is done by uh, by using the fact that uh, id is actually constant from the source to drain right. So, id is just a constant. And if I therefore, if I integrate I d as a function uh, I d uh, d x from 0 to L, I will simply get I d times L. Okay. So, I can do that on this left, right, uh, left side and I can, I can integrate this also uh, uh, with respect to x and when I do that, uh, this d v d x d x will give me integral uh, with respect to d v with respect to uh, v and uh, I can replace uh, the limits instead of li putting limits on uh, from 0 to L on x, I can put limits on V, uh, the channel potential from 0 to V d and that is what this is. And uh, notice that we have used for this W, we have used this uh, expression which we have seen before, where this V g, uh, this V b i minus V g minus V is the net uh, reverse bias across the uh, p, p plus n junction. Okay. So, the next step is to just carry out this integral. Okay. If you notice this integral has got 1 here can be easily integrated 2 epsilon q and d a squared all of these are constants this will simply come out v b i is a constant v g is a constant and then there is this minus v. Okay. So, the integral will only involve uh, this term 
it can be easily integrated square root of v so you'll get v raised to 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 and so on and with of course appropriate substitution okay so when you do all that evaluating the integral and using uh, this particular uh, equation you we get we get and of course you said it says do this so you must do this on the board or you must ask the students to do this as an assignment or uh, something and not just take it for granted okay so when you do all this you will get uh, when you if you want to put it in nice form you get this expression where <coughs> we have uh, notice that these uh, quantities are now dimensionless okay there is a voltage in the numerator there is a voltage in the denominator so there is a dimensionless ratio here that is raised to 3 by 2 this is another dimensionless ratio raised to 3 by 2 and uh, it can be put in a nice compact form if you replace some of these constants with a quantity called g0 and that is g0 here q 2 times q times z times mu n times nd times a by l okay all that is g why we do, why do we call it g0 there's a good reason for that <coughs> but before we go to that uh, where is the vd dependence in this equation id equal to all of this the vd dependence is basically uh, here vd and here right so that is important to point out where is the vg dependence vg dependence is here and here okay that's the vg dependence okay all right next so let's see what this g0 is so the uh, this g0 uh, turns out that it is the channel conductance if there was no depletion that means suppose you didn't have any depletion at all throughout and if you calculate the resistance of this uh, particular uh, box one over that resistance will give you g0 that's some, again something that you can very easily show so that is the conductance of the channel if there was no depletion that is if h of x was a throughout that means this h is equal to a throughout the channel okay so uh, that is more or less uh, the derivation and uh, often this is the this is not the equation that uh, is shown in textbooks uh, what we show in textbooks is a simplified equation and let's come to that now okay next slide so uh, we, before we do that it is good to uh, consider a special case and that is vd equal to 0 volts right so now we have this expression for id and we should see what what does it look like if we make vd equal to 0 obviously the equation you have derived should apply for uh, should should hold for the special case vd equal to 0 and why are we doing this because we already are familiar with this particular uh, uh, situation that we have done before we applied a non zero uh, drain voltage so this is your the generic uh, id uh, expression in terms of vg and vd so how does it simplify okay and this is something that the students can do as homework so there is a vd here uh, this vd of course remains as it is okay so there is a, a vd dependent term here and this is the vd independent term and you can actually expand this uh, you can carry out this uh, taylor series expansion and then show that it reduces to if your uh, vd is small it reduces to this particular uh, situation okay then that turns out to be uh, just this simplified uh, format here so now it is independent of vd because vd is uh, very small and it depends only on vg and if you use some of these expressions that we have previously derived you will see that this is uh, nothing but g0 times vd times 1 minus w by a okay now this is a very nice interpretation and uh, is pretty trivial to show what it is this simply simply shows that the channel conductance reduces linearly with w as seen before and we have done this before uh, uh, the ves equal to vd equal to 0 volts case this should be vd uh, so this is it is good to know, uh, good to know that this complicated expression reduces to something uh, reduces to something that we already are familiar with uh, and uh, something we have seen before <coughs> okay yeah now comes the very important question that is what does the iv characteristic look like so if i plot this equation that we have derived okay uh, as a function of let's say i 
keep a Vg equal to co uh, some constant value of Vg, for example, 0 volts here, right? Put Vg equal to 0 here, vary Vd from let us say 0 to 5 volts and plot this. What I get is I, I get uh, the current which rises and reaches a maximum at some point. What happens beyond this point, we do not know right now, but we will come to that later. Okay. So, that is the that is the picture. If I uh, uh, apply a reverse bias, so this is 0 volts, if I apply a reverse bias of minus 1 volt, okay, then this whole I d V g will come down, I d V d will come down and, but again it will reach a maximum at a certain drain voltage, okay, that drain voltage okay. uh, and so on. So, now this is something that you should actually uh, if, if the students are willing you should ask uh, actually ask them to write a program and generate this uh, plot it is very simple to write a program to do this. So, what is the key here for a given V g I d reaches a maximum at at what point at V d equal to V g minus V p ok. Now, it is not it is not obvious from this figure, but you can differentiate this uh, equation with respect to uh, Vd and show that the maximum occurs uh, for this particular condition. Okay, very simple uh, <coughs> differentiation. And so, so that is the uh, take-home point here. At this value of Vd, the bias across the P-plus P-n junction at the drain is what is the bias across the P-n junction? It is <coughs> Vg minus Vd, and that turns out to be Vp. And what is VP? VP has a significance. VP has a significance, significance that uh, it is a pinch off voltage, right? So the channel uh, is pinched off at that particular point. So what it means is, at this value of uh, VD, the bias across the P-N P junction at the drain end is VG minus VD equal to VP. In other words, the drain end of the channel has just reached pinch off. That is what has happened. And how do you show this pictorially? So, here is a figure which shows that. Okay. So, this is at this particular point, at this particular point or this point or this point depending on the VG, this is the situation here. Okay. This, is the, this is the situation. So, at drain end the, the depletion region, the top depletion region and the bottom depletion region are just merged with each other and that is the pinch off situation uh, denoted by this uh, circle here. Okay. So, let us go to the next slide. So, the important question to ask now is what happens if V d is increased further? So, now we know more or less the story up to this point. What happens if I go on increasing this? What will happen to this particular region? Is Will the current uh, just collapse? Of course, we know that it does not happen. It is important to explain why it does not happen. Okay. So, it is good to show this uh, kind of figure. Right. So, here we have, let me just get all these things and then expand. Okay. So, here we have various uh, situations, here is the I v characteristics I v I d versus V d. Here is a small uh, V d let us say you know 10 millivolts, 50 millivolts of that kind and this situation corresponds to this point A here. Then we apply, uh, apply a larger V d, but still before, uh, but uh, less than that particular value, then you get this point B here. So, that is the situation at that point. At C, uh, as we have seen before, this drain end has just reached pinch off. That means, the top depletion region and the bottom depletion region have just merged with each other. That is the situation D. Okay. What happens if I increase V D further? Okay. Uh, and of course, we know that we reach the saturation region, but why does it saturate? It is not very, uh, it is certainly not very obvious for any student who is doing this for the first time. And therefore, it is very uh, important to explain what happens in this saturation region. So, what happens in, uh, in saturation is that this uh, region, this pinch off region expands just a little bit okay? uh, and the excess voltage that we have now beyond V d sat, 
that all of that uh, drops across this particular high field region. And uh, so therefore, as you, as you can see that this region here, the, where there is a neutral channel, this region has not really changed all that much. And therefore, the conditions in the channel are more or less the same. Therefore, the current is more or less the same. And that is what happens in saturation. Okay. All, those, all of these things are actually written over here. <coughs> Okay. But it is it's very important to actually show uh, these pictures, I either draw them on the board or just show them, uh, just project it or whatever, and correlate that with an IV characteristics. Of course, all of this is at a particular VG. <coughs> Otherwise, the students really, we often ask our, uh, the candidates who come for MTech examination and we ask them what, why is this saturation happening, they often do not know the answer. It is very important to explain this. Okay, next slide. Okay, here is an example. It is very important to actually uh, ask students to do something like this. So, they develop some, they should start believing the equations rather than just mugging it up and writing in the exam and getting marks. Okay, and if they, they will start believing in equations only if they do something with the equations, and that is very important. And this is something that they can easily do, it is not really asking for much. Okay, here is an here is, a, here is a problem. An N channel uh, silicon J plate has the following parameters at three equal to three hundred K. That is the that is room temperature. A equal to one point five micron. The channel the, that is the half channel thickness. L is L is the device length five micron. Z that is the dimension in the direction perpendicular to the paper, fifty microns. N D two ten to ten two ten to fifteen. V B I point eight and mobility is 300 centimeter squared per volt second. What is the pinch off voltage? The you can actually this is this example these numbers are the same as before. So, the pinch off voltage is the same as what we saw earlier. And uh, you should <coughs> point out to the students that in this pinch off voltage calculation this mobility will simply not enter because we are not even talking about any conduction. We are just talking about a gate voltage at which the channel is completely pinched off and that is simply coming from electrostatics and there is no there is no conduction coming into that uh, at all. Okay, so, where does the mobility actually come into picture? That of course, comes into picture in IDVD characteristics. So, question B is to write a program to generate IDVD characteristics for V g equal to 0, minus 0.5, minus 1, minus etcetera. And for each of the above uh, V g values, they need to compute V d sat. That means, the V d value at which the channel uh, gets pinched off or the drain current saturates and show it on the VD, IDVD plot. The, and of course, the part of the part of an IDVD uh, characteristic that uh, corresponds to VD less than VD sat is called a linear region and that corresponding to VD greater than VD sat is called a saturation region. So, it is uh, it's very easy to write this program and uh, this, uh, students will feel much happier with the equation once they do this exercise. If they plot it, they should get something like this. So, this is the IV characteristics. Of course, the equation is going to give you data only up to this point. After that, it is just constant. And then this is the boundary between the linear and saturation regions. Okay. The linear and saturation region are also marked over here. Okay. So, I think that is more or less all for this topic. Uh, I think there are just a couple of comments. Okay. So, uh, it is important to point out that uh, in very, uh, very often, uh, we do not use this uh, original equation, uh, because we are only interested in the saturation region and there uh, a simplification works quite fine and that is very useful for uh, approximate design of circuits and so on. Uh, so, let us just go through this. Okay. So, this is our original equation and we are generally if we are if especially if we are talking about analog circuits, we are only interested in the saturation current. Right. So, saturation happens when V d sat is V g minus V p. If you do that, this whole term becomes just 1 and you are left with this uh, expression. So, that is the actual I d sat as it follows from 
our original equation. But uh, uh, it's a little complex because there is this 3 by 2 here and so on. So uh, very often a fo the, this following approximate model is found to be adequate in circuit design. And that is ID sat at a given VG is simply some constant ID S S 1 minus VG over VP uh, squared. That is it. Okay. Uh, where ID S S is nothing but the saturation uh, current at VG equal to 0 volts. And in amplifier design, we are interested not in the actual current, but in the slope uh, of this ID with respect to VG at a constant VD. So that if, if uh, that can be obtained easily from this equation, and that's what you get. Yeah. Okay. So some students might get conf if you show this equation, uh, some students might wonder where this comes from because they would in textbooks they would probably see this equation. So it's important to point out that this is actually an approximation for what you get. Uh, uh, theoretically. Okay. Now, uh, just one or one slide, one more slide, I think. On, yeah. So now let's bring back the neutral source and drain regions, because as, as as we said earlier, this part of the device is the so-called intrinsic part, but the actual device will also have some neutral regions here, which we can represent with some resistances. So, if you want to model this whole thing accurately, then you, this is your intrinsic device, which will follow the equation that we derived. Then, in addition, you have this source uh, resistance here and a drain resistance here attached to it, and that becomes a more complete, uh, maybe more accurate model. Okay. Very important to also talk about the small signal model, because if you are talking about an amplifier example like this then it is important to know what the gain of this amplifier is and that is where we need uh, a small signal model. Okay, so a small signal model is uh, required in analyzing an amplifier, it is uh, gain or even frequency response. And what is, uh, so what is an appropriate model for a, a JFET? We notice that between the gate and source, we have a P plus N junction. Between the gate and drain, also we have a P plus N junction. That means very large resistances. And so these large resistances are so large that we don't even we can just treat them as open circuits. But apart from that, we also have a P plus uh, since it's a P plus N junction. Apart from that, we also have a capacitance, and those are these capac this between G and S there is a capacitance C G S. Between G and D there is a capacitance C C G D. And these capacitances are actually important because uh, these will limit your uh, limit the performance of your circuit at high frequencies. If the frequencies are low, then of course these are open circuits and then they are not there. What is the other most important quantity? Uh, GM, the transconductance in the saturation region, that is DID dVG with PD equal to constant, and we already derived a little approximation for that earlier. Uh, so if you apply a VG here. The current, the small signal current here is Gm times Vg, where Vg is the small signal voltage. In addition, in our uh, derivation, actually, this there is no uh, resistance between this uh, the, between the drain and source because after saturation, we said the ID becomes constant. In practice, it is not quite constant, and there is a small resistance uh, between drain and source, and one over that resistance is called Gd. And this GD can actually uh, limit your, the performance of an amplifier a little, uh, somewhat. Okay, so that is the small signal equivalent model. And of course, whenever you talk about small signal uh, equivalent model, it's good to tell you, tell the students why you know we want to talk about it even. Right? Uh, and that is because we want to look at amplifiers. Okay, so let's go to I think the next one is probably the last slide. Oh, this is the last slide. Okay. All right. So I can take some questions, and there is still some time remaining, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some other uh, topic. But let's take some questions. Okay. If you have any questions, you can press the raise hand uh, button, and we can. There are also some questions on in the chat mode, so I can take that now. All of these slides are available on the web, so you can just download, use them, and look at it in more detail. In what way analog switch using JFET differs from digital switch using JFET? Mm. JFETs actually are not really used in digital circuits these days uh, or even earlier because uh, there, there were better alternatives, either the BJT or the MOSFET. So there is no, really there is no such thing as uh, JFET as a digital switch. 
uh, it is used uh, in I, I know that it is used in some of the sample hold kind of circuits and that is where uh, and that is because it can have a very large gate resistance and it is uh, it's the drain to source resistance you can control with uh, you know by appropriately design the device. But there is uh, for low voltage applications at least there is I mean the same job can also be done by MOSFETs uh, these days. KJ Samaya, if you are shown in N channel that region you are shown as a neutral whereas uh, when you are talking about the N type so there is a majority carriers are electrons. So you can say that the number of electrons are more than number of holes it is correct. Number of electrons is of course more than uh, number of holes. In the neutral uh, region, the light blue region that we showed in the slides, the uh, it's an n-type uh, region, right? So n d of the order of 10 to 15 or 10 to 16 or 10 to 17, whatever. So uh, and the electron density is roughly the same as uh, the doping density. That is, if the doping density is 10 to 16, the electron density is also 10 to 16. And the, so the hole density will be much much smaller than that because n times p will be about n i squared. Okay, so it and n i squared is like 10 to 20. So if your electron density is 10 to 16, the hole density will be 10 to 4, much 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 smaller. Okay, so that's why you don't even, don't even need to talk about it. Does that answer your question? Over. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, when you are talking about the PN junction, you are using the term barrier potential or cut-in voltage. Yeah. But you are using here uh, built-in potential. So as far as my knowledge is concerned, when I am going for built-in potential term, so you are talking about the work function difference. Whereas you are in PN junction, okay. using the, you are using the term built-in potential. Can I use the dot? Or. Okay. Uh, well, built-in potential and the cut-in potentials are two entirely different things. What is the cut-in potential? If you plot I versus V for a diode, you get something like this. And of course, the current in the reverse direction is very, very small. And if you, uh, well actually it is steeper than that and if you extrapolate this, this is called the cut-in voltage or the turn-on voltage, right. Now the built-in voltage that I talked about is, is completely different than this. So if you are familiar with the PN junction diagram. Let us just take a PN junction in equilibrium, right. You have the P type region here, the N type region here. This is the boundary between the two. Professor Sharma must have done these yesterday. Uh, then you have the potential varying something like this, depend of, depend, depending of course on the doping den densities. This is flat, right. Okay. The built in potential is basically the difference. in potential between these two points. This is called built-in potential, okay. Now this is the situation in a PN junction even if you do not have a reverse bias, right. And so and this built-in potential is necessarily is responsible for a depletion region here, W depletion, right. So in a, in a JFET even when you do not have a gate voltage applied or when your gate voltage is 0 you still have a depletion region and that is why we showed those uh, little blue regions you know, after the P plus regions, right. What happens in a JFET is you have this VBI and now you ap apply in addition a reverse bias. So what happens is this gets pulled down etc. and this becomes your net uh, potential drop. As a result of course, a lot of things will change. This picture is not very clear. The depletion region will also change. The depletion region will expand 
and many uh, things like that will happen. In a P plus A injunction, what happens is that this uh, this part of the depletion region is negligible right, compared to that one, because if you look look at W uh, depletion on the P side to W depletion on the N side, you get something like N D or uh, sorry N D over N A. And if your N A in a P plus injunction is much larger than N A or N D, then it is like zero. Okay, so therefore, in in the JFET figure, we are not even bothered about this particular uh, part in the on the P plus side. We are only worried about uh, the N, N side. Okay, is that clear? So the cut-in voltage is something that uh, comes into picture when the device turns on the P injunction. In the JFET, we are we are not allowing that to happen at all because we are never going to forward bias the uh, gate uh, to source junction. Right? We are always going to operate that under reverse bias. So this is actually not relevant. This is what is relevant. <coughs> okay. Sir, uh, while showing the polarity for the built-in potential, it depends upon the it depends upon the work function difference. So it is like this: key, let us say P having let us say four. Uh, work function and let us say n type having let us say 8. So, shall I give the polarity positive to the n side who is having work function if work function more than the p side or? In a p plus n junction we actually do not talk about the work function. Work function we talk about for a metal semiconductor junction not in a p plus n junction. So, let me just talk, uh, draw a realistic band diagram for a p plus n junction. Okay. So, if you have uh, a voltage of 0 volts, this is what it looks like. So, th there is almost no depletion region in the P region and the entire depletion region is uh, on the N, N side. Okay, so, there is no question of any work function. So, uh, <coughs> this E C minus E F will depend on what is this doping density N A here. Okay. So, this what is, so what is the actual uh, difference between this and that? You can go down like this that is E C minus E F on the P side, you come back like this, then you come back like that and then you come back like this. Okay. So, that is the actual difference between this level and that level. And what is uh, this E C minus uh, E F here? That again will depend on what is the doping density. Okay. So, of course, the uh, work function will be important if you are talking about uh, a MOSFET where the gate is a metal. So, then the, the, the gate work, the, the work function of the metal will come into picture. In this case, the work function is not really directly come into, coming into picture because these things are determined only by the doping densities. Let's take another. Overcome college, do you have any questions? Over. In the different amplifier shown using JFET, sir, you have used a pair of uh, RGs, RG1 and RG2. Can you explain the need for these uh, RGs? Over. I am not sure if I get the question. Uh, let me see if I get your question correctly. Is your question about the source resistance and drain resistance like this? Over. Is, is your question about RS and RD? Yeah. Is, is I repeat the question, sir. In the difference amplifier shown, oh, you in the difference amplifier, the resistance named as RT1, RT2. Can okay. you explain the need for? Uh, using this pair of resistances. Okay. Yeah, well that is actually not really uh, in, in the context of this particular topic it is not very important, uh, but uh, I believe this may be for some protection purpose. I am not 100 percent sure. Okay. So, there is one question about what happens to uh, <coughs> what happens at depletion region when breakdown occurs. Okay, there is a question about what happens to the depletion region when breakdown happens. So, let us look at uh, that part. All right, so when breakdown happens, uh, 
the p plus n junction uh, the insulating region is not the sorry the depletion region is not insulating anymore but it actually will conduct large amounts and as a result your iv characteristics the current will uh, basically shoot up and you would have seen that in data books and such so if you keep on increasing the drain voltage your uh, the p plus n junction will keep getting more and more reverse biased at some point what will happen is this junction will simply break down and then the current the id will uh, start increasing dramatically and of course you never want to operate in that particular region it's not useful for amplifiers or any digital circuits so you always avoid that region can we find the number of electrons passing at one cross section for a f e t of uh, find the number of electrons passing at one cross section okay <coughs> of course you can it's very simple let's look at the cross section of the device so the number of electrons crossing uh, a particular area uh, what is the electron density at uh, so this the light blue area is the one that you are talking about so what is the number of uh, so you can take a small delta x here maybe i can just draw here okay so let's say this is your this is that light blue region this dimension is 2 uh, times h this dimension is z okay your device actually is like this in that direction so what is the number of electrons crossing this let's say per unit time so let's take a small slice here with a finite thickness delta x okay now in this particular area at a at a given time what is the number of electrons that we have the number of electrons here is uh, the volume 2 times h times z times delta x multiplied by the electron density the electron density uh, over here throughout this area is equal to the doping density because that region is a neutral region so that is the number of electrons that are in this uh, area at a given time t right now <coughs> we would like to know in how much time will all of these electrons leave this particular region okay so let's calculate that delta t so what is delta t equal to delta t is equal to the distance divided by velocity what is uh, the distance what, what is di the distance is delta x and what is the velocity mu n times the electric field i am just talking about the magnitude not the signs okay <coughs> and so th these many electrons in this volume leave this particular region in that much time <coughs> okay so per unit time if you want to know you need to just divide that by uh, delta t <coughs> the unknown here is dv dx and for that you need to actually solve the device equations inside the uh, device and that uh, one can do by numerical numerical uh, solution not analytically there are some other questions but the time is up okay all right so if your question is not been answered you can uh, you are free to uh, uh, send it again on moodle and i will try to get back to you Thanks for your attention and I'll see you tomorrow again.